How are you guys doing today? This is Gilbert with Interactive Utopia. And today it's uh, part two of our videos of working with the MetaMask wallet. Last time I gave you uh, an example on how to just create a basic login and then have the user uh, signed uh, some data. Uh, we didn't get to verifying it, so that's gonna be what we're gonna be talking about in this video. All right, uh, first and foremost, my name is Gilbert. I'm with Interactive Utopia. If you need any help with your web development projects, please do let us know. You can go to our website, give me a, give us a call, or uh, send me a message, and I'll, I'll, I'm at your disposal with whatever you might need assistance with. Uh, with that out of the way, uh, you know I want to give you some information in regards to the uh, documentation that you can read so that you can know how everything that we're talking about it's working you can go to docs.metamask.io and they're gonna have a lot of documentation on how everything works you know the, from getting started uh, to you know signing data which we're doing today uh, you know pretty much uh, you can uh, initiate transactions there's a lot of that, the things that you can do with this um, with this API. Uh, so in this scenario, we're going to be working with uh, MetaMask API, and as they say in here, we need the NPMA package eth-sig-util, which is basically just a package that uh, allows you to uh, interact with uh, the Web3 uh, network uh, or the Ether Ethereum network. Um, you know, in the documentation, it's very helpful. They even give you some uh, brief history on how everything has been progressing. But we, we are working with Type Data version 4, which is the latest version of the EIP 712 spec as of now. All right, so that's the strictest one. Uh, it does, they do give you an example on the bottom of the page, and you can see all the code from the. Um, from their application, uh, but uh, we are, this is a little bit of a outdated code, so we're gonna be uh, updating it with the latest changes, all right? So I'm gonna show you how to how to take care of that. All right. Um, I would like to show you, of course, the, um, the application that we're gonna be working on. Let me close this off. And uh, basically, uh, you know, it's, very similar to the one that we worked on last time, uh, but in this case we moved it over to React, uh, and uh, and uh, you know it's 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 just a different uh, structure behind it, but the code itself that makes everything work it's very similar. So the first thing we gotta do is we have to sign in uh, with MetaMask. We're gonna be using uh, one of my test accounts. We're gonna be connecting the account and once everything is connected um, uh, you then you can sign um, a test message now if you like um, in here you know I'm just providing public uh, wallet address uh, in case you, anybody wants to send me some uh, some Ethereum <laughs> it's just a test account so uh, if you do let me know so I can transfer it out of here uh, but again once we are signed in then we can sign an actual message now. Uh, you know, we're requesting the signature. It's going to give us a pop up. Uh, we have the message and then we're going to be signing it. Once we sign it, the system's going to verify that the person signing it, it's the actual person that, you know, sent the request. It's, you know, it's coming from the same wallet. And here, you know, it's a successfully recover signer as you know, the original wallet address. So you can give that a try with your own wallet. Um, so let's go see how everything works. Let's open up uh, Visual Studio Code. There we go. And uh, let's get started. You know, basically this is our main file from the application. This is where everything's gonna be started, app.tsx. Uh, you can go to GitHub to get a copy of this, um, of this code as well, if you would like to follow up. Uh, follow uh, you know the code as we go basically uh, in here all we're doing is you know we're creating uh, a quick header uh, and then we're requesting the user to uh, 
to log in, you know, because once they, they arrive at the, at the page, uh, they haven't logged in, they're new users, so we gotta make sure that they log in or they authorize the application uh, before they proceed any further. Uh, of course, you can always, you know, have a database, you know, maybe create a session. There's different ways of avoiding this for better, better um, user experience that we don't have to like authorize it every single time. But for now, we're just doing a, an example. So, you know, it doesn't need to be very fancy. So we are requesting uh, the request login uh, component, which is located at components forward slash rec auth. So let's go ahead and open up that file and see how that works. So basically, uh, we're starting the our function that uh, uh, you know what we're going to be returning over to the customer. And uh, in the beginning, uh, we use a hook. Uh, use uh, you know uh, a hook to see if there's a change on the user wallet address uh, uh, state. Uh, and if there's a change, then, uh, you know, of course we, we log it. Um, but the important, uh, thing in here, you know, is we got to check it to see if the, if there's a, a, a wallet address store, if there is one, then, you know, the user can go ahead and request a signature. If there's not, then, uh, we need to have them sign in. So basically if the user wallet. Uh, if, if the length of that wallet is zero, basically there's nothing in there, then uh, we have some HTML code where basically um, they're gonna be requesting the requesting the authorization uh, to be able to to log in. So basically this this gets done by the Ethernum request section of of the, of the call. Uh, you gotta pass the method, you know, which is eth uh, underscore request accounts it's gonna do that request and then the user is gonna authorize it and we're gonna be uh, setting the user wallet of, for for the results uh, it's account zero because basically we're creating the variable accounts which is uh, an await request uh, to get that that wallet address <clears throat> so once we get it we just need to store it uh, once it's stored the you know React applications uh, when there's uh, changes in the in one of the sections, then it's gonna refresh itself automatically. So once it's stored, it's gonna go through the check again, and now it's gonna there's gonna be a wallet address. So instead of returning the signing button, it's gonna be returning the user wallet address, and then we're gonna be uh, requesting a second component, which is request signature. And we're going to be passing the wallet user wallet address uh, uh, information over to that uh, component. So to find out where this is located, we can go to the top of the file, and we see this rec underscore sign. So we can open that up, and basically this is where we're going to be requesting the user to sign uh, their their data. Um, in this uh, component, basically, the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting up the data that the user is going to be uh, signing. So uh, that gets work with that gets done with a uh, with an object. Uh, you can basically do whatever fields you want on the message. The most important thing that you need is in the domain the chain ID. Number one is Ethereum. Uh, the name of your application or signing uh, request, uh, and then you you know you, you send the message, which is what you see on the actual box, and uh, you know name translation start. You know it just you can send them again whatever information you uh, you want them to sign. Um, there you do have to give them the inform the type information for all of. Uh, everything that you're sending, uh, which is basically set up, you know, in this section of the code, uh, you just let them know, for example, weight vector, uh, which it, it is the primary type. It's it's uh, mentioned right here. You know, the name is a string. Start is a point. End is a point. Cost is uh, uh, unit in integer two hundred and fifty six. So basically, a number. 
Uh, so you can go to the documentation and they'll tell you a little bit more about uh, the type, the different types and how to structure your request a little better than me. I know I'm not, you know, not the best at explaining that. There's just uh, more that goes into it. But all you need to know is you, you basically set up your object and that's what the user is going to be signing. And you can like the message part of it, you can whatever you want to put in there. Uh, as long as you specify the types properly, you can do whatever you want. Uh, now that we have the message message parameters that we're going to be sending, uh, basically the thing, the first thing we're going to do is get set everything up so that we can send it over to uh, the API uh, to get the user signed. So we do need to stringify the uh, the the object you know, that, that we're going to be sending for the message. So uh, the json.stringify is going to do all the job for us. Uh, we need to get the account, which basically we, we are retrieving from the props, you know, that, that we're receiving from the from the other component. Uh, the parameters is basically just the account and the message parameters. And then the method, as I mentioned, we're doing signed type data version four. Uh, once we have basically the what, what what we want them to sign their account, you know all the information that we need, then we make the call. Uh, this is called this is made by Ethereum dot send async. It's basically an asynchronous call where we're going to be sending the method, the parameters, and the account uh, for or the wallet address for for that user. Uh, once we send it, we're going to be uh, calling a function. First, we're going to be checking for errors. If there's any errors, we're going to call them out. If there's no errors, then uh, we can store the signature as a string, uh, you know, which basically comes from the result. And uh, then that signature we can use to um, to verify that the wallet address is, you know, the actual wallet that we're looking for. The way that this gets done is by using the function recover type signature. This has been changed, I believe, the end of, or in December 2021, so a couple of months ago. There's not a lot of documentation on how to do it with the updated uh, uh, code, but I'll show you the best that I can. Uh, the first thing that you need to do with everything else, we, we hadn't needed any packages. But for this one, let's go to the top. You do need, as I mentioned, the MetaMask. ETH SIG util, uh, which you know, there if you go to the documentation, you can just download them or you can go to MP npm and get the the um, the code in order to implement it into your application. Uh, with that being already uh, included, then we can make the actual call. Uh, we are going to be storing the result of that call in a variable, which is what we're going to be using to uh, verify it. The, this actual uh, function it's going to return you the the account wallet address from where that signature was created all right so you don't provide them the wallet address uh, you know when you're calling this function you just provide the message parameters and the uh, the signature that you received and with that is going to provide you with the wallet address that it was originated originated from um, so basically after that it's fairly easy if the restore wallet uh, address it's the same as the original account that created the that originated the call for the signing then we can uh, alert the user that it's been successful if you have if there's an error or there's been some uh, uh, compromising in there then uh, then we're gonna provide that error with the user saying that it failed to verify so this you know a lot of this can be used on the back end of, of um, applications this way uh, you know you can handle the errors as as you seem necessary and more if you are processing certain things uh, that way you can uh, accommodate the, that that error to to your application and you know maybe have the user try again or something like that uh, and then you know just at the bottom over um, over a component, it's just what we're returning, which is basically, you know, the the button, you know, for the user to go and click on it so that he can sign it. And, you know, we're just calling the function uh, that, that we created once he clicks it. So, you know, fairly straightforward. Um, tips. Uh, I had a big issue with buffer. Uh, once you start working with the npm packages and you you know, included into your application, uh, you might get some buffer issues. 
the way that I was able to resolve this is why by using Webpack as my uh, uh, you know uh, as my um, package handler. Uh, so basically, instead of going through the regular um, uh, React uh, package builder that they have, uh, we use Webpack. And in Webpack, you have to do the, use the plugin for uh, for buffer. So let me show you how that goes. Let's go to the, the config file. Uh, you are going to be needing the buffer uh, plugin, uh, which is just a package npm um, i buffer, I believe. And then you're also going to need the uh, process uh, browser plugin, uh, which basically, you know, it's uh, the one that we need in reality is the stream browser file. That's you know, that's pretty much the one. Um, the so what happens is uh, process browser is basically just to handle the processes. The buffer is to handle the buffer of the of the uh, wallet accounts, and then uh, stream browserify. It's basically like a a package of core JavaScript functions so that they can you know resolve a lot of the 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 backwards compatibility issues and also some of the connection issues that that, are, that react is going to be uh, creating there's a lot of information online on how to fix this problem i'm not the only one that had it i believe uh with the latest ver version of webpack uh, there was a lot of changes that were made uh and that you know, unfortunately you know it it, it kind of hurt the this type of application so so it just needs a little bit of more more work to to get it uh working but once you you know if you package it correctly with webpack uh you can just upload it to your server uh to your node server and then you know it working wonderfully uh so so yeah you know just just a quick recommendation in there um but uh but yeah so pretty straightforward Let's take a look at our application again. Uh, let's refresh it so that you can see how it works again. So here again, we have our home page. Uh, the user hasn't authorized it, so we need to authorize it. Now that it's been authorized, then we can see the second section, the second section where we're getting the wallet address, and then we're going to be able to sign a message with that, with that wallet address. We sign it. And then we verify that the account, the wallet address is the same from the one that was originated. So um, that's about it for me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that it helps you uh, create your project and uh, do, you know, build whatever you're trying to build. If you have any questions, please do leave them in the comment box below. Uh, if you like this video, please do subscribe to the channel. And once again, if you need any assistance with your project, uh, send me a message or you can also visit me online at interactiveutopia.com. Thank you and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.